It's Dark Side Phil's Game of the Year Awards for 2012. The Top 10 Best Games of the Year. Honorable Mention, Halo 4. You know, sometimes I get irked when I see people telling me that just because I don't agree with a lot of the mainstream media, that I'm just hating on what's popular. Listen, I understand that Halo 4 is a huge game, it's a great game, it's a fun game. Halo's series as a whole, the franchise, has had some of the most addictive, competitive multiplayer gaming ever created. I fully 100% understand that, and I actually had a blast playing through Halo 4's different online modes, both by myself and then later on playing with the fans for fan appreciation during the holidays. So I understand the series' appeal. I understand it's a shooter that's easy to jump into, but also can appeal to a more hardcore style player. I'm not saying anything to, negative about that about the game. What I'm saying is I have a major gripe with people picking this for game of the year. Halo 4 kind of stuck straight to the formula of previous Halo, previous Halo installments because I really think that 343 Industries, studios, whatever they're called, wanted to prove that they could make a good Halo game. And that's fine, but when you paint by numbers, you're going to get pretty much a similar experience to all the previous games. And I really do feel that they played it a little bit too safe. Some of the things that I think they kind of flubbed on, the campaign of the game is far too short, is too easy in co cooperative gameplay, and is too difficult if you play it by yourself. The story itself isn't that interesting. It's pretty generic. It's a kind of story that you've heard of a thousand times during these sci-fi style games and movies, and it really isn't anything to write home about. So how I can read some of these media outlets lauding the game as the campaign is amazing and multifaceted, like, did you play the same game that I did? This is the same kind of situation way back when Halo ODST came out, and people were kissing the game's ass and giving it 10 out of 10 when the game wasn't really even a complete game. So, Halo 4 is a good game. You will have fun playing the campaign cooperatively, even though it may seem a little bit on the easy side and it may seem a little bit short. You will have a lot of fun online with Forge Mode, making your own maps, with the online multiplayer. There is an outstanding amount of different kinds of online gameplay that you can do with Halo, and that's always been a staple of the franchise. But the reason that Halo 4 really didn't make it to my top 10 favorite games of the year, number one, that campaign is just flawed, and number two, they stuck too close to the formula of previous Halo games. It, a lot of people are calling this Halo mixed with Call of Duty. I would kind of agree with that. What they did is they pretty much have similar gameplay to previous Halos, but just added in classes and such and loadouts similar to the Call of Duty franchise. I don't think that's enough to really keep Halo being at the top of the pack. I think it's a good game, but it was not one of my picks for Game of the Year. However, it does get an honorable mention. Now back to the countdown with number 5, Hitman Absolution. After somewhat of a hiatus, Agent 47 comes back with a bang. Hitman Absolution takes the game series into the modern era with updated graphics and lots of gameplay tweaks that make the game way more appealing to those who weren't into the more hardcore style of gameplay of the earlier iterations of the Hitman franchise. The addition of a camera that allows you to see people through walls and see where they're going to be walking and moving allows you to plan out your assassinations a lot easier than having to actually go in there and physically see the stuff for yourself. There's also a lot of enhancements with the shooting, with different meters and abilities and such that make the game a lot easier for the newcomer and I'll be honest, I never really played many of the, the previous Hitman games and I probably did if I didn't have these accentuations to the gameplay would have probably found this game a lot more difficult. However, the good news is the developers said, you know what, we understand we have that hardcore fan base and we're not going to leave them out and make the game more mainstream and kind of screw them over. So there's actually a game mode where you can turn off all of the new additions. You can actually play the game exactly like the old Hitman games, which I think is what a lot of people enjoyed. You could have the best of both worlds, easier gameplay for those who want it or the old style hardcore gameplay for those who want it. There's also the addition of a totally new mode called Contract, in which you're able to create your own assassination missions 
in the maps that were in the campaign of the game. And this can lead to some crazy difficulty and hilarity, especially when they're telling you to kill certain people who basically never turn around and you have to do it in co covert mode and it could really add challenge and creativity to the game. With previous Hitman games, people were already creating these challenges, but only they were doing it outside of the bounds of the game, saying, oh, I dare you to kill this certain person with stealth within this amount of time, and people would go and try to do it and record it for YouTube. Now there's actually a game mode where you can do these missions online and then get ranked at them, and you can see how you stack up against the competition. So really, this is a case of the game developer listening to the fans and being in touch with their community and giving you what you want. Having some of the best dialogue of any game this year, Hitman's just, it's great writing. Just listening to some of the side conversations of the people who were just around is fun and it's great. And they're actually talking about the things that have happened that, you know, oh, Agent 47 killed so-and-so. And you're like, wow, that's cool. I just did that mission and now they're talking about it. That's awesome. But also, just some of the variety of the missions in the gameplay. You have to kill a giant MMA cage fighter. You have to kill a group of... That's right, assassin nuns. I mean, crazy off the wall stuff. I really, I felt like the game was designed by Quentin Tarantino, but that's a good thing. That's kind of the uniqueness and the interesting content of the game. And you say, wow, this is really one of the best games of the year. Now, the one detriment, some people said, oh, the game's a little bit on the shorter side, especially if you're using the things that make the game easier. It's only about maybe 10 hours long, to which I say, yeah, but there's so much variety in the ways that you can kill targets. Why wouldn't you want to go back and replay the game several times to find out some of the more hilarious, more creative ways to get the job done? And I really enjoyed replaying missions over and over during my playthrough of the game to try to figure out what's a creative way to kill this guy rather than just running up and shooting him in the face or choking him out. So Hitman Absolution, great game. I'm glad the series returned. I hope the sales numbers are good enough that this game can now continue on as an ongoing series. One of the most original and one of the best games of the year. Up next, it's controversy time, but I call it like I see it. One of my favorite games of the year gets a high spot on my countdown, but I'm sure there's going to be people who disagree. Check it out.